Let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 27 to 32. It's the Gospel for Saturday after Ash Wednesday. St. Luke writes, Jesus saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And leaving everything behind, he got up and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were at table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes complained to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said to them in reply, Those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. That's from Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 32. It suggests thoughts about saving from sin. What do I mean? Well, as is the case so often in the Gospels, here we have a scene of tension between Christ and the Pharisees and their scribes. Christ invited Levi, the tax collector, to follow him, which he did. There then followed a great banquet for him in his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were at table with him. The all-holy Christ, who taught the way of holiness, was to be found fraternizing with numerous tax collectors and sinners. The religious leaders demanded an explanation for this behaviour, and our Lord in answer explained that he had come as a physician for the sick, as one who calls sinners to repentance. So this is what the God of holiness is like. In the Old Testament, God says to us, Be holy, for I am holy. He commands us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. We are to have no other gods in our life but him. And yet, as St. Paul puts it in the letter to the Romans, all men are under the power of sin. God responds by coming to us to heal us from the sickness of sin and to call us to repentance. Let us imagine the recognition which, which Levi had of his own sinfulness and his recognition as well of our Lord's love for him. His immediate response to our Lord's call to follow him shows how deeply he prized the love of our Lord. Let us imagine too the delight of the large crowd of tax collectors and others who were at table with him during the great banquet for him in his house. Luke chapter 5 verse 27 to 32. It implied that they recognized the profound holiness of Jesus, his great power before God, and that he loved them. They knew that he expected them to repent. Christ, who now lives in our midst, expects us to repent. He wants us to recognize, as did Levi and the large crowd of tax collectors and others, that we are sinners and that we are loved by God. He wants us to be like Levi, who got up and followed him. By the power of his grace, we can leave behind the sins that cling to us on our journey through life. How are we to do this? To begin with, we must understand that repentance is not just a one-off action, even though there can be unique moments of special response during life. Levi's response in today's Gospel was a very special moment when he left all for our Lord. But that was not the end of the matter. He had to follow through on this same pattern time and again in life when the call came to him to follow our Lord in ways he had not foreseen. His life as a disciple of Christ had only just begun, but the pattern and the need of repentance would remain. So too with us. Whenever we de detect through a constant and daily examination of our conscience, that we need to repent from some venial sin 
or from a sinful attachment, there and then in our hearts we ought to repent of it. If we strive to live constantly in the presence of God with a lively and sensitive conscience, we shall during the course of each day be enlightened by the Holy Spirit as to the sins that are present in our hearts. Whenever we become aware of some moral fault or some sin, however slight it may appear to us, we ought to repent of it there and then. In large measure, holiness will depend on constant repentance from venial sin. The following of Christ involves a habit of repentance, which includes purpose of amendment. Let us never allow sin to remain accepted in our life. Rather, let any sin that is unmasked, however slight it may be, be renounced there and then. The fact is that of ourselves, all of us are under the power of sin. Christ has come for all because all are sinners. The problem is that this is not recognised. The sense of personal sin has been lost and so the appreciation of the person of Christ is very easily lost. Let us every day place ourselves among the sinners in our scene today and hear Christ's call to us to come and follow him.